Uh, good afternoon, good evening, uh, Global Pathmakers. So thank you so much for um, joining our live stream. Um, well, I have one question for you. So do you want to take your business to the next level by increasing your revenues, right? So, you know, we have, uh, what we're talking about today is um, pasta, right? Pasta is like, you know, already a huge market, right? You know, do you know what the market size of the pasta in the global market is in 2023? That was 68 billion US dollars, right? And then it's going to still grow to 100 billion US dollars by 2032. That's that's amazing, you know, um, the big market size, right? So, you know, it's like, it's no brainer for us to start taking a piece of pie in this market, right? You know, by, well, creating, you know, unique pasta, right? Because, you know, you want to be unique, right? Um, be able to stand out in the crowds. So, and then, you know, there's no better uh, way or like tool than our Richmond Gold One to do this. You know, for you to start making your own um, unique pasta, you know, stand in the market, and then you know, probably possibly like you know, taking uh, I don't know like a few million US dollars in this market, right? Um, so that's what we we're talking about today. Uh, we are going to, um, you know, well, make a unique pasta, right, on Richmond Gold One, and then so that you can start making you know, taking your um, business to the next level in the next six months, right? So you can do it um, by, you know, watching this live stream to the end. And uh, so by watching this live stream to the end, uh, you can start, right, making your own unique pasta or crafty pasta, right? And then, you know, start making, um, you know, um, expanding your business right to the next level. So. Um, I prepared like some slides, right? I want to go over with you, like, you know, for you to be able to like understand, you know, how you can make your own unique pasta, right? On Richmond Gold One. And then after that, like, we want to actually show you guys, you know, how a variety of pasta can be made on Richmond Gold One, right? And then, you know, we're going to take the pasta freshly made and then to the kitchen, right? Where, you know, we're going to cook up, cook them up and then, you know, show you guys a few um, great pasta dishes that um, we create. So, Let's go over to some slides, right, that we, I prepare, right, and by, you know, creating your own pasta. So, so first of all, um, you know, when we want to talk about pasta texture, like, it's all about texture, right? Like pasta, uh, and then, you know, to be able to, like, create unique pasta, uh, you know, you want to understand, like, how you can create your own pasta texture, right? So, um, so this is the kind of chart way, um, you know, I want to use to kind of describe different types of pasta. And basically, you know, um, it's a hardness, right? Hardness and softness. And then, you know, the size of the pasta, right? And the protein content of the wheat flour that we use determines the hardness of the pasta texture. And then hydration, right? How much water we add to the flour, you know, determines the hardness of the noodle texture as well. And then uh, the noodle size. So, we have, uh, so basic rule is like very simple, right? You know, basically harder, right? And then the, the thinner it should be, you know, and then uh, thicker, like, and then softer, right? Uh, that, you know, that's the kind of combination that we want to remember, right? When you are creating, you know, when you're creating on, on pasta. So uh, linguine, spaghetti, like these are like typically thin noodles, right? So like we want to make them hard. Right, by using you know higher protein content flour and uh, or reducing the amount of water we add, right? And then um, the fettuccine, um, papadine, like these are like kind of very thick, you know, like white uh, noodles. So want to make them you know softer, right? And um, it's kind of similar um, chart, right? Similar chart, but like this kind of difference is that like well, we I just wanted to compare that like you know Richmond Gold One is capable of like well, covering different types of like you know, hydration range right i mean compared to like conventional pasta machines like which you know everyone else in the market is currently using to make um their own pasta right so that's why i'm saying like is that like richmond one is like you know well very flexible in or uh, making um you know pasta that are like you know what well, widely different like in terms of like a hydration ratio which determines the um the pasta texture right so and con conventional pasta machines like are just capable of, like covering just you know just 32 percent and like 36 um, percent um hydration range uh, whereas uh richmond gold one is capable of like covering well 
25% and 45% uh, hydration rate. So like, that's amazing, uh, right? I mean, in terms of uh, a kind of pasta texture that it's it's capable of creating. Um, so ingredients of pasta, right, uh, is uh, wheat flour, right, solid ingredients. You know, we want to think of like ingredients as like solid and liquid, right? Uh, so wheat flour and uh, semolina, uh, oil flowers, and liquid ingredients, right? Um, so basically uh, water, uh, right? And then, you know, eggs, right? Eggs are like typically used, right? And then, you know, we can use eggs, right? Uh, fresh eggs too. Um, but uh, fresh eggs, we use fresh eggs, right? We want to count the uh, solid ingredients, right? So we have like one whole egg, right? And then we want to think of it as like, well, 30% um, of it as like, um, well, solid, right? Solid ingredients. And then 70% uh, of it as, as a, like liquid ingredients. So like, you know, for example, if we have like, um, well, 100 grams of eggs, right? Fresh eggs, a whole eggs, right? And then, you know, want to think of the 30 grams of it as a solid ingredients and then 70% of it as a, a liquid ingredients. So, that's what we want to remember, you know, when we're using fresh eggs for the your know, pasta. Um, salt, right? Salt helps to develop like gluten, stretch, and the taste of the salt, right? T salty taste. Um, oil, uh, olive, uh, creates the gloss like smoothness on dough, and then keep dough from sticking together. And then plus we add the flavor of the olive oil. Different types of uh, beet flowers that right, you may use for your pasta, like hard, hard flour, you know, semi-hard, um, medium. Well, all purpose for like cake flour. Um, then, you know, these are different, like in terms of like gluten content, like and being high, like type of gluten, and then granule size, right? Um, larger and a quarter or finer. Um, types of wheat, right? Hard wheat, uh, semi hard. And uh, use uh, purpose, like, you know, bread, pizza, pasta, and then ramen, certain types of Chinese noodles, um, udon, bao. So, even though, like, um, similar flour, right? Uh, the different types of flour, right? There are, you know, traditionally being used for pasta, right? Even though, like, you know, we can use actually different types of flours um, too for your pasta too, you know? So that's why you can be different. You can, you know, differentiate, differentiate pasta, right? They stand in, um, stand out in the crowd in the market. And uh, what we want to think about, um, right? When choosing your flour for pasta is that, um, the protein, right? Again, like that's hardness, right? Hardness of the protein, um, the pasta texture. And then ash content, you know. So ash is basically minerals, like how many minerals are contained in the flour, pasta flour. And then that's gonna determine the color, right? Darkness, the, or the flavor of wheat, um, you know. Higher the ash, the flavor of wheat, uh, it's, you know, more flavor, flavor right? The viscosity is something that um, that means that um, how elastic the, your pasta is gonna be, right? But, you know, it's, usually low in semolina. So like if you want to bump up your viscosity, like elasticity of the pasta, you want to kind of, well, blend the different, you know, uh, flat bars, right? Which has a higher viscosity value. So viscosity um, is, you know, usually high in um, low kind of, well, some of medium, like low protein content flour. So, um, you know, we want to test it um, then, you know, to create your own pasta texture, right? So this is the like five variables like we, we use like when using, you know, creating the pasta recipes, right? So um, wheat flour, right, um, 7 to 13%. Um, then wheat flour, like starch, this is basically starch, right? And then, you know, inside starch, like we have something called um, amylose and then amylopectin. And the ratio of these guys is kind of determines the, um, viscosity, uh, like how elastic the, your pasta is going to be, right? A high ratio, you know, we can go from 25% and then even like probably 45% to like 50%, right? Depending on the, um, the flour you're using. Okay, so the noodle size, right? Thickness, uh, width. In case like we are making like a lasagna sheet or like, you know, ravioli sheet, right? Um, then, you know, we're just talking about the thickness, but, uh, um, you know, but basically the hot, you know, thicker, the harder, right? And then lastly, right? Um, so how you going to serve your pasta, it also determines the hardness of the noodle, uh, the pasta, uh, you know, because basically, you know, if you serve on cold, then it gets harder, right? So these are the five variables like you want to remember when you, you know, creating your own pasta recipe.
So making a pasta recipe, um, you know, as I suggested, uh, I think it's a good idea, you know, for you to be different, right, in the market. Um, you know, you don't want to go like, you know, all in with the, like, say, Molina flour, you know, kind of traditional, you know, and then you're going to be the same with the other guys, like, all in the market, right? So um, it's going to be complete. So uh, what I want to suggest to you is that, like, you want to blend, right, different flour, like, for example, say, Molina, uh, 60%, and then, you know, another flour that has, like, lower protein content, but, you know, higher viscosity value, right? So kind of creating um, very unique pasta texture, right? So, you know, this is a kind of just one example that, that you may want to take on, right? But, you know, so that's what, what I'm just suggesting. Um, so hydration ratio is like, it's very, um, so why, I, I just want to explain why the hydration ratio matters and then, you know, why um, conventional pass machines are not capable like handling like all these like different hydration ratios, right? Uh, is that like, you see, door size is like, door, like, door size gets bigger and like, you know, harder um, as the, you know, hydration ratio like, you know, decreases, right, 25%. Um, very like kind of flower, kind of, you know, looking at this picture, right, like it's just kind of almost just, you know, powder with like a kind of wet powder, right? Yeah, as the hydration increases, right, um, you know, the door size gets bigger and bigger and they're like, you know, well, over 50%, that's like a pizza dough, right? So um, that's why, you know, processing these like different um, um, types of dough through, um, you know, several rollers is like going to be very difficult for uh, certain, um, you know, pasta machines and certain types of like noodle machines. So basically, Higher the high ratio ratio, like you know, well, the bigger the roller gap uh, initially we want to set, and um, so good in development. So like you know, we have like okay, you know, mixer, right? Um, so we have like flour, you know, liquid, and then you know, so hydration. So like we get the, this like crumbles dough, right? From I mean, our mixer, and then like we're gonna process them like you know through the set of rollers, right? So we're gonna feed it to the roller, and then we get the you know rough sheet of dough, and then we gotta separate it and like, you know, combine them through a roller, right? So that's like combining process, you know, that's how we um, work the dough, you know, how we strengthen the dough texture, right? So um, after that, um, we just wanna thin it, right? Thin it to the final thickness and then like we just cut it, right? And then, so the thickness is determined by the roller gap and then width is determined by the, uh, you know, the cutter that we use, you know, they kind of like this one. So, you know, it's a uh, very different, um, so we have like different sizes, different shapes, right? Um, so, you know, so higher the hydration, right? And then, you know, as, as I said, uh, the, you know, so, um, bigger the size, right? So that, you know, the balance is, um, is it, it's balanced, right? You know, thicker and then softer. So we're talking about like fettuccine, like pappardelle, right? Um, kind of pasta. And then, you know, lower the hydration, higher protein content, make it harder. So. You know, we want to make the noodle size smaller, right? We're talking about like angel hair, like, you know, spaghetti um, kind of pasta. So well, we have like different shapes, right? Square, round, um, edgy, like deep group, right? So we can make them like, you know, different shapes. You know, we can, you can turn them into like different shapes. Uh, round, and round is kind of typical for like um, spaghetti kind of type of uh, pasta. And then, you know, papa dip, like that's kind of square, but like, you know, very wide, right? So <laughs> that's... Um, so that's how you can like um, create your own pasta, unique pasta, right? Um, then, you know, different shapes, different uh, pasta texture, and then by changing your like ingredients, right? Um, you know, well, blending like different semolina flour and then like, you know, well, another one with uh, like a lower protein on it, but like higher viscous value, like, so you can create your own unique pasta in different sizes, different shapes, right? So that's why I'm saying like that you can do, you can start making your own, like you're taking your business to the next level by, you know, creating your own pasta, right? Over the next six months, you can do it like with our Richmond Gold One machine. Uh, so let's uh, start making your own you know, pasta on the Richmond Gold One. Yeah, so we have over here like Richmond Gold One machine, right? So this is the, you know, most uh, advanced, only one noodle machine we have, um, you know, that's, we've been like, well, shipping out like to USA, uh, Canada, um, you know, all over the world, basically in Europe, um, 
you know, you name it, right? So it's very versatile, and then you know um, has this uh, mixer, right? Um, that makes like wonderful uh, pasta dough. So it's uh, it's all in one, right? You got everything uh, in this uh, piece of equipment. Um, so so like what like people using this um, which we go one like is loving about this machine is that like you know it's design, right? So you know you can show off like how you make your pasta to the customers and then you know kind of love like watching it, right? So it has this like um, silky mixer, right? It's a 10 kilogram silky mixer. Um, so you can mix up to like 10 kilograms of solid ingredients at the, you know, the batch. And then um, we, so, you know, again, like in this um, flower, right? So let's say like you have some organ flower and then like, you know, another flower, the lower particle, but higher viscosity value, right? So that's how, how you do it in this mixer. Um, this mixer is designed to um, optimize this, uh, you know, hydration, you know, which is a very important process in the uh, making the pasta dough hydration. And then, um, you know, it, well, it rotates at um, 75 or so speed per minute, um, which is the, well, ideal rotation speed, right, to make, uh, you know, pasta dough. And um, so make me uh, prepare this liquid, right, which is uh, already, you know, pre-mixed with the 10% um, egg, right, and then salt and olive oil and water. And you can do, uh, you know, all egg liquid, right? Which is going to be a bit costly, but, uh, you know, the noodle and the pasta texture is going to be like, you know, hard, right? Because, you know, it's got a lot of like eggs, right? Lots of protein, right? So it's going to be um, pretty hard. And then, so she's uh, pouring this liquid into um, the lid, right? Lid has, uh, has like some small holes, right? Positioned in like, you know, um, in a way that like well that allows like um, good hydration like you know just drip the uh, this liquid eggy liquid uh, through through this these holes right little by little so that you know it's get um, good hydration going right so you know and then you know we hate to waste your time right so like um, make me prepare this dough in advance right and then it's kind of uh, you know putting this dough on a plastic bag right and then. So that that way, uh, this dough like kind of rests, um, kind of ages, right? So kind of resting process that um, allows this dough to, um, you know, hydrate better, and then you know promotes the uh, enzyme of the wheat flour to start acting up, right? And then, you know, so basically uh, creates this like great strong uh, wheat flavor, right? Oh, and then so you know, it's a very something that you want to do, right? Um, to you know promote your um, make your own you know unique pasta right so what she's doing now is that like you know placing this dough right conveyor belt and then you know starting the feeding process uh, of the dough right into the roller and then making the rush of dough first right so we call this process uh you know rough forming right rough forming so like uh, we're getting like a sheet of dough that's still rough but you know we want to make it stronger right and then so because it's like, you know, original one is like very smart, right? What he's doing is that like, you know, it's feeding the dough, right? And the uh, optimal speed um, so that, um, you know, you don't have to do anything, right? It's like, you know, which is doing like everything for you. So like, you don't, you know, you kind of bored, like, you know, not doing anything. And then uh, in conventional noodle machine, pasta machines, like you'd have to like, you know, feed the dough, right? By yourself, by manually, by hand. Right. And then if the hydration high, like dough is big, right? So like, you know, it's cumbersome. Like typically you have like a safety gate, right? That kind of, you know, uh, prevents your hand from going to the roller, right? You know, so, but like, so, you, you know, you're kind of like going like, um, you know, kind of opening a gate a little bit to like, you know, uh, that triggers the machine to stop, right? And then, you know, um, put the, put the dough in there, then like, you know, restart a machine and then, uh, you know, um, going uh, opening the door, safety gate again, like they, so, it's very cumbersome, like it's impractical. So like you know, a lot of people hate it. But uh, you know, we solve this problem by well having this like uh, very soft, sophisticated sensor. Um, you know, it's what we call like cotton uh, sensor, right? That kind of well, it's a bit invisible right now, but like well, that's running right now. And then like if you put it past hand through it, uh, you know, it just stops, right? So we solve this problem. Like you can have both of the good world. Um, you know, 
practicality and convenience and then safety right so um that's why it's great you know for um any person right any person without any experience right um you know so you can um put like guy you hired last week right on this machine to and then you know expect him to like well for, you know make um pasta that's like um you know professional pasta maker like you know with that over 10 years of experience that people making right um and then without getting injured or anything like you know it gives a peace of mind so you can put anybody um on this machine right so in the current world where you know it's very hard to like find and retain like skilled labor right so you know that's why like a lot of people look at well you know, choosing this machine, even though like it's a little pricier, right? And the commission machine, you know, it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. So like rough forming part is done, right? But like it's still, it's still like kind of still rough, you know, kind of fragile, right? This pasta dough. So, you know, we want to make it um, stronger, right? Want to make it firm. And then how we do that, how do we do that, right? Well, we do that by uh, separating it in two sheets, right? And then, you know, combine them through uh, the rollers, right? So that's that's a process we call um, combining process. So combining process is very important, right? Um, to create your own like unique pasta um, texture, right? Um, that's something you know we you want to do um, to make sure that uh, you have like awesome, awesome pasta texture. So basically separating it to half, right? Like roughly half, and then, um, you know, wanna combine them, right? Feed them through the roller. Just reading them through a roller, um, and then you know, changing the uh, roller gap, right? And then you know, and another thing that's great about like this Richmond Gold Y is like you, know, you can see everything, right? We can see everything that's going on in this machine on the touch panel, you know. Um, you can even like diagnose like an autobus shoot, right, on this uh, touch panel. So it's like you know, it's very user friendly you know you don't have to know everything about like pasta making or like you know or your um which we want to be able like um you know make your pasta and then maintain the machine equipment and then you know so basically you gives like a peace of mind basically to um the daily you know pasta production that uh you know it's a uh, Anyway, so like this is a combined machine, combining process, and then you know we're feeding them through roll, and then you know making um, awesome pasta t-shirt now. So this uh, batch is basically four kilograms of solid ingredients, right? And then. Um, you know, hydration um, about like uh, 38 percent, um, right? 38 percent, but like you know, 10 percent egg, eggs, right? Fresh eggs, and then you know, um, 90. Um, I, I think 90 percent of it, like, well, no, I mean like 85 percent or so, like you know, water, and then you know, other is you know, salt, um, uh, olive oil, kind of typical, um, you know, combination of uh, these ingredients, but like. You can play around, right? You know, you have like different flour, you can have like different uh, liquid, um, you know, so you can play around uh, to make, you know, so that's the whole purpose, right? Whole mission of uh, this live stream is that like, you know, you want to make your pasta unique, right? So that you can stand out in the market and then grab the um, piece of, uh, you know, 68 billion US dollars in the uh, you know, market and then, you know, still growing to 100 you know, billion US dollars in 2032, right? So, yeah, I mean, it's just uh, it's just 80 years, right, from now. Like, and it's just 80 years, like, and it's gonna, this mar this industry is gonna add, like, you know, 30 billion US dollars more, right, to the market, you know? So you can 
grab uh i don't know like four or five million us dollars and the <laughs> 30 million US dollars, right? Um, you know, by creating uh, your own pasta, right? And then starting from now to, you know, over the next uh, six months or so, right? Um, yeah, so first, uh, for mining processes down. Um, so what we want to do is that, like, we want to do it for the second time um, to, you know, make it like really firm um, to make sure that you know you have your own uh, awesome pasta texture right so we usually do this um, twice yeah but I, I think it, depending on the type of pasta you're making uh, you, know, you can go like you know three times or like one time right and then um, and from this point on right um, you want to start um, dusting Right, start dusting. So again, Richmond Go One is you know only one machine, so like it also has the you know, dusting automatic duster. Right. Yeah, which is very important, and then you can adjust the amount of dusting, right? So basically, uh, higher the hydration, the more water you add, uh, you know, wetter, right? You know, more dust. So you want to control. And um, yeah, dusting powder, um, normally you could do, um, you can use uh, corn starch, uh, you know, potato starch, like anything that um, keep your pasta from sticking, basically. Um, but the, uh, you know, but the problem is like you know when you cook the pasta, right? And then you know depending on the kind of starch you use, um, you know that some some starch will make the cooking water dirtier faster. So you know that's something you wanna you know keep in mind when um, finding your dusting powder. So combining process is done right so um you know all we do from this point is just to um thin it right thin it to the final thickness to the final thickness but you know you we don't want to go um you know drastically thin the you know pasta dough because uh you know if you thin it drastically like so that was three millimeter and then like you go um you know like one millimeter, like all at once, right there, that's gonna damage the gluten, right? That, uh, you know, we worked so hard, right, so far to create. Um, so, you know, we wanna go gradually. Uh, so we apply this uh, rule uh, called like 30% reduction rule, right? So like we go, you know, 30% thinner uh, every round of uh, thinning, right? So, you know, three millimeter and then, you know, three by 0.3, kind of 0.9. So like, um, yeah, subtract it from three and then we get, you know, 2.1, like around two millimeter. So, you know, and then two millimeter, like 0.3 times point, right? That's 0.6. And then, um, you know, so subtract it from like, you know, two millimeter and then, you know, 1.4, you know, something like that, like, so, oh, gradually thin it uh, so you know that you won't uh, damage your um, awesome pasta texture right so that's that's something like, you want to remember you know um, it's not just uh, probably which you will want but like you know probably applies to um, you know if you're making your own pasta like on a conventional pasta machines too 
that's something you want to remember, you know. Um, So, um, so we can go faster, right? Uh, after combining process, we can go faster. Um, you know, you can speed up the the roller. You speed up roller. So um, now we are thinking at uh, 1.5 millimeter, right? Uh, but you know, one thing you don't want to remember is that, like, well, the pasta dough, right? It always, you know, expands, right? Uh, so the moment like that's going through the roller, that you know, that's 1.5 millimeter, right? But like, you know, uh, after that, it just bounces back, right? It just bounces back. So, like that's like a natural, uh, uh, wheat, you know, dough like made of wheat flour. So um, that's something we want to remember. Um, so it's a so it's a, always a good practice that like you want to measure your pasta dough, right? Um, by you know, measure measurement tool like a uh, caliper, uh, something like that, right? So you know, make sure that you know the actual thickness of a pasta dough, so that you know you can adjust the roller gap to um, the appropriate gap, right? So that you know you can get that. Um, you can get the right thickness every time, right? So like, you know, it's consistency, right? Consistency is like very important, right? When, when it comes to, um, you know, well, anything, um, producing anything, right? Um, so, cause you know, consistency, like, um, cause you don't want to be disappointed, right? When, you know, you go to a restaurant and then, you know, you had that very good uh, meal and then, you know, next week you go to the same restaurant and exactly the same restaurant. So like you remember that, like, oh, I had a very good uh, dish last week. And then, you know, um, then you uh, have, you know, order the same thing, right? And then, well, you get disappointed because like that is like n n so totally different, right? Totally different from like, what, like, you know, well, like, you know, just slightly worse or something. Um, so, and then, you know, you probably don't want to, go to restaurant again because you know you get disappointed you know so so that's that's a loyalty you know this consistency um, produces the loyalty uh, or customer loyalty customer stickiness so uh, consistency is very important so that that's why um, we um, measure everything right um, you know the the um, trademark the um, <laughs> cooking method that we call uh, digital cooking, right? Um, you know, we, we um, rely everything on number by numbers, like, so we go by weight, you know, instead of like going by like, volume, because you know, it gives us more precision. And um, yeah, so yeah, so that's why I'm saying like, you know, you want to measure everything, right? Um, yeah, that gives you consistency. And then, uh, so now, yeah, it's 1.8, 1.9, 1.8. Yeah, 2, uh, 1.9, 1.9, uh, 5. 1.8, yeah, 1.8. Um, so, it's gone through 1.5 millimeter roller gap and then you know bounce back by 1.8, so bounce back by um, 0.3, right? 0.3 millimeter, and so that gives us the idea to for how much how you know what the roller gap we need set to get to the final thickness, right? So we expect that to bounce back by 0.3 millimeter, right? Um, you know, then we're gonna cut when right? and this like this is the cutter we use, right? Um, to and um, that's square number three, uh, square shape number three. So, number three means that's um, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter width, 10 millimeter width, right? So, um, 
it's a fairly wide, um, you know, cutter right here, fairly wide uh, for, um, I guess, pasta as well. Like, I think um, we could call it like pedicine, uh, um, papadeli, but like papadeli is like usually, you know, 15 millimeter, right? But uh, this is, uh, you know, smaller. I mean, uh, yeah, but you know, you can definitely make like wider because, um, you know, we have cutters that are, you know, wider, wider, uh, way wider. Um, so you can definitely make it, yeah, wider, way wider. Um, so you want to cut it, right? Uh, 10 millimeter width width um, is, is okay. And then what's great about like this original one is that like, well, you can, uh, you know, see, you know, maybe me just sitting on a chair, right? Like folding chair, uh, and then in front of me, like, um, and then the, where the pasta is coming now is like very visible, right? Very visible. So, you know, one thing you can do is that like you can put like uh, this, um, which we go one machine like in the, where like um, customers can see, right? And then, you know, you can definitely show off uh, how you make your pasta, right? So, you know, it's very entertaining. Um, and then customers can say like, well, oh wow, you know, the, the pasta is like being, you know, cut like in front of my eyes, right? It's very fresh, um, very satisfying uh, since, since uh, you know, that they, you know, customers can have by watching, you know, their pasta like being made in front of, right, in front of their eyeballs. So it's good. Um, yeah. And um, so, you know, it's, it's not only like production equipment, but also kind of, you know, attracting mach machine, attracting tool. Uh, that you can have for your business, right? You know, yeah, imagine um, you post your content uh, on Instagram or something, right? That shows, you know, okay, you know, I'm gonna make this kind of pa unique pasta this week, so I'm just come by, and then, you know, also we can show that, you know, Richmond with one machine, right? Um, you know, the customer will love it. And then, you know, they go like, wow, why they, you make like, well, your past, like with this beautiful machine. Um, so that's uh, another, you know, perk that you can have by, you know, using this Richmond with one machine, right? So this is kind of um, Papa Deli or like uh, fettuccine kind of pasta, right? So that was very easy. Um, so we're going to change the cutter um, and then uh, to make, um, yeah, it's very round and then, you know, thin. Like number 30 is like one millimeter, you know, that's one tenth the noodle size, pasta size that, you know, we just made one tenth, right? You know, it's one millimeter only, like very thin and then round, right? Um, so you can call this kind of pasta probably like, um, yeah, angel hair, right? In your hair, yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, some, yeah, some, yeah, more like you know, spaghetti. Um, you know, thin spaghetti, right? So, ideally, uh, you want to make a separate dough, right, for this pasta, you know, because like this is very thin, right? So, um, you know, you want to make it hard, right? So, ideally, uh, you know. You want to make a separate dough for this pasta, but um, you know, for the sake of this demo uh, live stream event, uh, you know, we are using the same dough. Um, yeah, so very thin, completely different from. So pasta texture is very different, right? Uh, you know, when you make different sizes, even though uh, the dough is the same, uh, dough is the same, like you know. It's very different, um, the past stage. If you try, you see, you know, um, it's very different. Um, it's amazing how different they are, you know, because it's made out of the same, exact same dough, um, but because of the shape, um, the size, right, it feels completely different. Um, so, 
yeah, having the same dough and then you know turning it into turning it into like different sizes, different shapes is also a good idea, right? It can be also a good idea for um, you to do. Um, so if you if you hit the kind of perfect um, dough recipe, right, and then you can probably use it for you know different sizes, different shapes, you know. Um, so that works, right? Um, So cutting, so it's a meat, right? Um, so you can make a different uh, serving sizes by you know cutting at different length, right? It's very easy to do it, like you know, um, with this uh, volume, right? You just set the volume like uh, longer, you know, shorter, right? Uh, for different serving sizes, right? You know, you can probably like um, you know. Customize the serving size by like customer, like you know, customer can probably have an order form, uh, you know, short, medium, uh, uh, longer, long or something, and then you know, kind of have them choose, have an option like choosing a different sizes, right? So, right, so we, we now have like two different pastas, right, in this uh, very short period of time uh, that we had. So that's how quickly you can go, right, and it's Bridgman go on. And so we had this dough kind of saved, right? You know, and then, uh, yeah, we want to do something different with this dough. Um, we want to do something different. So I just in the roll gap for uh, this dough and yeah, and then you know, thin it. We cannot do it. We cannot do it. I don't so. Yeah, so what? Thinning, right? We're just thinning, and then, um, so we have, we now have, uh, this, uh, sheet of dough, right? Complete, um, you know, sheet of dough. That's thing that then like kind of reach the final um, thickness, right? And um, <clears throat> so we have this uh, pizza cutter, right? This pizza cutter. Um, so want to do. Yeah, so we want to cut. Want to make a cut, and then you know, So kind of turning, holding this dough like this, right? And then, you know, making and cutting them, cutting them, right? And uh, so we now have, uh, you know, um, kind of half handmade, but uh, uh, we now have like a wide, wide, uh, wide proper uh we, we can call it like papadeli um, kind of pasta, right? See see how easy that was, right? Um, see, it's very, yeah. And another one, um, you 
yeah so again like folding that folding it right folding it <laughs> okay um <laughs> so it, it, yeah it's very wide um Adanya sheet but Adanya sheet right um yeah, another like um you know Papa daily kind of and one thing you can one thing you can do to uh, make sure that uh, these are these are consistent is that like you can you know use kind of tool to make sure that uh, uh, each 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 pass is the same width or something like that uh, you know um, and then you can basically um kind of you know arrange this operation in the way that you know it's very efficient like faster right um you know you can probably have like another guy doing like an you know one thing and then you know making it really really fast right um so so yeah that's that's uh how you can make you know your own unique Pasta on Richmond Go One, right? It's very easy, very simple. You don't have to have any experience at all, right? Any skill at all, right? Um, so, you know, it's fantastic. Um, so let's move to our kitchen, right? Or um, we're gonna cook, cook them up, right? Cook up this pasta. And so, you know, this is the kitchen that where you know we teach our uh, ramen school, uh, udon school. And we do like all these like uh, research and development, um, you know. So, Skitch is designed to teach people, but like we also do like lots of experimentations. And, uh, you know, um, you know, we are all about, you know, delicious noodles, right? Uh, making people happy with the delicious noodles. So, uh, you know, we were into like all kinds of noodles, right? Uh, not just only like, uh, pa, uh, ramen, udon, like Japanese noodles, but also like, you know, um, Chinese noodles, um, any, any, any kind of noodles that exists out there, right? Uh, or, you know, even like something new, completely new that doesn't exist before. So, um, so we have Mr. Sun, right? Uh, one of our instructors, you know, while showing us how, um, yeah, you can make something in your own make pasta dishes, right? So, this is a lasagna sheet, right? Um, that you know we already sort of uh, you know made, right? Uh, prepared, right? And then uh, we're gonna bake it. We're gonna bake it now, right? It's gonna take about ten minutes to bake it. So um, it's kind of rather smaller lasagna sheet. Um, yeah, sorry, we only had this uh, kind of small, um, small. Uh, container right yeah make sure that you take the wrapper off right before you put it in the oven yeah and then um, bake it um, 10 minutes right and uh, yeah 180 degrees Celsius right Okay, so while it's being baked in the oven, uh, you know, Miss Song is going to show us like something, some pasta dish. So, um, okay, so taking this kind of papadilly sort of uh, type of pasta, uh, we're going to cook them. We'll cook them up. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. So one thing you want to remember when cooking your pasta, your new, any type of noodles, that like you know you want to have um, a lot of water, right? A lot of water, you know, at least like ten times the amount like uh, what rate of pasta you're cooking. A lot of water, and then at the same time you want to have um, um, you know boiling water, right? You wanna you want to, you want water to be boiling before you put uh, throw a pasta in there. You know, um, otherwise your pasta is going to, you know, uh, is not going to get cooked well. Because uh, what a lot of uh, even professional chefs um, mistake is that like, you know, they throw pasta in there like, you know, when the water is not still cooking, uh, the um, Ideal temperature you want to have, right? You know, uh, cooking water is like 98.6 degrees Celsius, right? So you want to um, have your water, you know, at this or above this temperature um, before you put a pasta in there, right? So and then temperature pasta is like way lower than the cooking water, right? So, you know, when you put throw your pasta in there, like uh, the cooking water temperature drops. So even though, see, now it's like start boiling, but like even though now it's boiling, you know when you put a pasta in there, like the you know see the temperatures drop, right? And then um, so you want to have you know strong um, heat, right? Strong heating system, so that uh, you can maintain the um, you know, higher temperature in the cooking water, right? So that's one thing that you want to remember when you're cooking your pasta, right? You know, we work so hard to like create this pasta, and then you know, cooking uh, pasta actually makes or breaks your pasta. So, you know, this is something you want to uh, remember. Okay. Um. So three minutes of cooking. Um. So you know, while the your pasta is being cooked, uh, let's start another fire over here to. Start, yeah, um, crafting, uh, you know, this carbonara, uh, pasta, right? Carbonara, papa de. Um, so butter, right, in the bacon. Keep the bacon, and then, um, uh, you know, so you want to start, like, um, start frying them. <clears throat> yeah, so stop trying fry stop frying them and like right. uh the bacon uh already has uh you know a lot of fat so it's gonna it's gonna produce uh, a lot of oil. So you don't want to add uh, too much butter, and wanna stir fry the, some um, chopped up onions, right? Yeah. So we want to stir fry onions to the point where you know um, they're gonna lose all the water, right? And black pepper, uh, is a coarse black pepper. Yes. Time's up. Uh, yeah. Even though we set the timer to three minutes, uh, because um, we cook it, we cook this pasta for the first time, so you know we want to check it, test it. Yeah, so just ch checking the if the there's still like some you know 
row bar, row core uh, left. So you may want to cook it for another minute. So we're basically aiming at, you know, having like al dente um, texture. And yeah, but we want to kind of slightly undercook the pasta so that like we won't, after we um, add it to the, the pasta to this sauce, right, uh, you know, which is still going to cook the pasta. So, you know, we want to undercook the pasta um, a little bit. So taking the pass now. Yeah, so you want to strain the water well, right? Otherwise, with this water, you know, drains the sauce. Yeah, just a little bit salt, right? Um, yeah, so we will use the eggs, right? But uh, you know, make sure that you put the eggs out for the fridge, and then you know. Um, that yeah, you you want uh, eggs to be at um, you know room temperature when you know you use it right. So you want to separate the uh, uh, white and yolk. Yeah, so we're just gonna use uh, the yolk only. Yeah, yolk by using only yolk, right? And then we gonna you can have like you know richer um richer sauce, right? で、あの、熱いの面でこの生卵の yeah, so by adding, you know, hot pasta, right, just cooked up uh, pasta, you know, high temperature and then, you know, into these eggs, right. So in Japan, like, we have something called like kamatama, which is, uh, um, you know, I udon noodles, like, um, put on the, um, you know, fresh eggs, right. Um, and uh, by adding adding like hot pasta to fresh eggs uh, the eggs gets cooked a little bit right like kind of halfway through so um that you know it, it, we, we can have like kind of similar um thing going on with the uh, uh kamatama udon and then you know so that's going to give us like kind of richer um flavor you know taste right Yeah. yeah, and then kind of cooking the eggs in a way, and then, um, you know, we want to well, coat the um, pasta well with the eggs, right?
yeah, one thing like I know I I feel sorry about like you like you know just watching this on the um you know remotely on your smartphone you know is that like um you know you can get to taste the uh, smell um uh, you know the whatever we make on this uh, live stream right uh, so you know I mean, we feel so bad right because uh, they are very delicious and then we want you to you know taste it you want to try it um but you know what we can do right is that uh you know we can you can go to if you're in america uh, then you can go to our you know showroom in houston texas right and then you know actually experience the noodle making and then you know try the um fresh uh noodles are fresh made in the during the event uh, or like a demo right and then uh, you can go to amsterdam right you go to amsterdam um then you can go to our showroom right um then you know yeah do the same thing um and then now uh, we have uh another showroom like um you know almost ready to go in bangkok uh thailand so if you're in thailand like you know southeast asia like you know um please check out our website um to find like where it is right so yeah um yeah i didn't know it was the this was a plate um black thing is plate um so okay um the of course cheese right so sprinkle some cheese okay and then some basil And again, like black pepper. Okay. Um, so this is a kind of unique um, carbonara. Um, yeah, I didn't know that this black thing was a plate. You know, I thought it was like some kind of, a, you know, Something that you uh, you know put underneath the uh, uh, hot pot or something, and then okay, yeah, pass. And then I think uh, that uh, that's almost ready. I think it's ready. The uh, lasagna, yeah, lasagna. You know, people in the oven. Uh, I think it's baked, ready to go. Right. Um, so just 10 minutes, uh, we now have uh, be be beautiful lasagna done, right? Um, then uh, to finish it, uh, we parsley, uh, we put some parsley, right? We sprinkle some parsley, then it's done. It's beautiful, um, yeah, red, yellow, um, you know, and then green, that's beautiful. It's combination of colors, um, it's wonderful, beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so we now, we have like two pasta dishes, two awesome pasta dishes that you can start making from tomorrow, right? Um, you know, so... Thank you, thank you, thank you, Sansa. -san. Uh, it's uh, these are uh, beautiful. Uh, they must taste amazing. Uh, and then you know, I hope uh, you'll be able to come to Japan, or, like you know, come to Amsterdam, um, come to Houston, Texas, and then or come to like Bangkok, Thailand, to you know, try out uh, like all these like uh, beautiful pasta that we can make for you, right? Yeah. So you know, uh. So we had, and then, um, so eight years, right? It's a made like, you know, 30 US billion dollars, right? It's a, um, a pull grab, right? You can start making your own, you know, unique pasta from today, um, rich go one machine. And then over that six months, you can create your pasta empire, right? Uh, by, you know, creating a unique pasta, um, by, you know, doing like, you know, what you can, what you can learn from this live stream. So, um, yeah, please, um, uh, if you, 
have any questions about creating your own pasta, like uh, uh, about reaching your one machine, you know, um, please comment down below. Uh, you know, we love you so much. And then, you know, we hope to see you back in the next live stream event. Um, I think next week, right, I'm going to Manila, Philippines. So uh, we're going to do some live stream uh, thing, right? Um, I'm not sure, like, if you're going to do that, like, on YouTube channel, but, uh, you know, maybe Instagram uh, live stream. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, please check out our website. Uh, I think, you know, there's going to be a page, like, something explaining this uh, live stream event, right? So, um, so thank you so much. You know, we love you so much. And then, you know, happy Friday, you know, TGI Friday. Uh, you know, thank you so much. We love you uh, from both bottom of our hearts at Ebru Ayamato. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, we hope to see you back in the next live stream. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.